Okay, so we're going to talk all about a really big concept today. I want you to look at all of these parts. Okay, what do they all have in common? They're all a part of electricity. Okay, so what we're going to learn about today is electricity and how it has to flow through a complete or closed path. Um, in order for an electrical current to work and produce either light, heat, or sound. Okay, so go ahead and take your journals out, and we're going to take um, some notes. It's not too long. It's about um, maybe 10 minutes. Um, and then after we take the notes, and then we will, I'll show you a little demonstration, and then you'll be all prepared for lab tomorrow. Please make sure you do watch the entire video. We haven't had one in a while. Um, and make sure that you understand the vocabulary and especially the difference between a complete and an incomplete circuit and what the purpose of a switch is so that you will be ready to investigate with your group tomorrow. So journals out, page 34 and 35. Okay, so we should be on page 34 of our journal and we're going to go through some key uh, vocabulary that you're going to need to know to be successful to understand circuits and electricity. Okay, so our very first definition says a form of energy produced by the movement of electrons through a closed circuit. Okay, well, we already know this one. We know that when um, electrons move through a circuit, we know that as electricity. Okay, or we may say electrical energy. Okay, so go ahead and fill in your definition here. Um, we're going to wait to do the illustrations. Um, until after we have explored and completed our units on circuits and electricity. So right now, just worry about getting um, the words down, okay? Okay, then our second word, it's the pathway through which an electrical current flows. It must flow through a conductor, okay? So the pathway that the current flows, that's what we call a circuit, okay? Um, and that's a U right here, I'm sorry. The, the electrical current, in order for um, anything to have electricity, it has to flow through a circuit. Okay, now when it's, we keep using this word flow. Okay, and all flow means, just like kind of when water flows, um, it's to move or travel in a certain direction. Okay, and then like we talked about, we always... The, the energy has to come from somewhere. The light bulb doesn't just turn on by itself. It has to have a source, okay? The source is where the energy comes from, okay? And then we should be very familiar with these next two words. So we can have materials that allow electric current to flow, and that's going to be called a what? Good, a conductor, okay? And then we can have materials that will slow down or stop the electrical current from flowing. And remember, we call those insulators. Okay. All right. Now, our next one is the flow of electricity around a circuit. Okay. So we know we have a circuit, and we know that the electricity is flowing in it. And that's what we refer to as the electric current. Okay, now, the next one is something that we don't have to have in a circuit, but most circuits do have it because it allows us to either make or break the circuit. It allows us to control whether the circuit will be closed or open and whether or not we want the electricity to flow. Okay, and that's what we call the switch. Okay. Now, and this is something we're going to investigate later in the week, but I'm just going to introduce the term to you right now. Um, we can also create magnetism by an electrical current. And this is, it's a really easy word to remember because it just simply combines electricity and magnetism. We call it an electro, I'm going to put a dash here, electromagnetism. Okay. And like I said, we're going to explore that later in a week with a really fun lab. Okay, so these are our key vocabulary words. Um, you want to make sure that you are studying them and that you understand all the parts of a circuit and how electricity can flow. Okay, so now that we know all of the parts, we want to make sure we understand when a circuit works and when a circuit doesn't. Okay, so go ahead and flip to page 36. 
Okay, our title is going to be incomplete versus complete circuit. Um, these are two more really important vocabulary words that you're going to hear. So what you want to do is you want to make a little t-chart. And we're going to break it into, we're going to make two sections. So I'm going to have an incomplete or what we call a open circuit. Okay, so you could hear it called incomplete or open. And then I'm going to have a complete or what I call a closed circuit. Okay? All right, so an incomplete circuit. Okay, think about it. If it's incomplete, did you do the whole thing? Is everything right? No. So if it's incomplete, then that means that electricity cannot flow. So in an incomplete circuit, electricity cannot flow because, remember the because part, there is a break or skip in the circuit. Okay? So this means that there's something not set up completely right. Okay, so maybe there's and then there's a lot of ways a circuit can be incomplete and we're going to explore that this week. Maybe a wire's not set up or if it has a switch, maybe the switch isn't on. Okay, so all of these things um, can be an incomplete circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, do two illustrations. So we're going to first draw an incomplete circuit just with a light bulb, a wire, there's my battery, positive and negative. Okay, so this would be an incomplete circuit. Why would this be an incomplete circuit? Good. Okay, so this wire is not attached to the other metal end of the light bulb. Therefore, it cannot light. So the bulb is not lit. Okay, um, so then we could also draw. And we always want to label, remember, we always want to label. So here's the source, here's the light, and we can put the light's not lit, and we it's not lit because we have a broken wire, okay? Now, but that's not the only way I can have an incomplete circuit. I can also have an incomplete circuit when I do have a switch. So here again is my light. Now I'm going to hook it up to a switch. Okay, do you notice how the switch is open? There's my battery source. Okay, so here I have an open switch. Here's my source, and the light is not lit, okay? Now here, everything is connected. The wires are all connected. The positive and negative ends is correct. However, the switch is open. So whenever a switch is open, we have an incomplete circuit, and the electricity cannot flow, okay? So now, on the other hand, when everything is connected, I'm going to have what we call a complete or a closed circuit. Okay, so electricity can flow. There are no breaks or skips. Okay, so now let's turn this one into a complete circuit. So I'm going to have the same light source. Okay, and I have my energy source. This time, how can I complete it? Good, I'm going to attach the wire. So here's my wire. Now that everything's attached, the light bulb's going to light. Okay. 
And don't forget to label, here's my source. And here's my light. And it's on. Okay? So now, let's make this one complete. Okay, so... I've got my energy source. I've got everything connected. Now, what do I have to do to the switch? Good, I have to close it. Okay, so now I have a closed switch. Okay, so if I have a closed switch and everything else is connected, then I have a complete circuit and my light will come on. Okay? So these are really two huge, huge things you're going to see. And you're going to need to be able to recognize the words incomplete, and that means open. And then you're also need to gonna be able to remember complete and close. And if you look here, complete and close both have a C. So that might be an easy way to help you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to just a little demonstration so we can see the difference between an incomplete and an open circuit. I'm sorry, an incomplete open circuit and a complete closed circuit. And then tomorrow you guys will get to investigate making um, lots of complete circuits. Okay, so now that we know the difference between a complete closed path and an incomplete open path, um, we want to see what that looks like in real life. So um, here I have my source or my whatever the energy is going to go to. So in this case, it's going to go to a light bulb. Here I have my wires, okay? So right now I still have an incomplete open circuit because nothing's connected. And then I need my energy source, which in this case is the battery. Okay, so right now, not everything's connected. Okay, so I have an open circuit. I have an incomplete circuit because not everything is attached to each other. Now, once I attach everything, oops, I still have an incomplete circuit because the wire came unattached. But now, what do you notice has happened to the light? It has come on. Okay, this is because I now have a complete closed circuit. Everything is connected. Everything is working together. So I have a complete path where electricity can flow. Now, I can add in this switch. It is not necessary for me to have a switch in my circuit, but... If I would like one, I can have one. And a lot of things that you see, like you guys learned today in class, do have switches. So right now, everything, okay, so now here's the thing to keep in mind. Everything's connected, okay, all the wires are connected, but is the light bulb on? No, so I still have an incomplete open circuit here. Why do I still have an incomplete open circuit? Good, because the switch is not on. If the switch is open, then I have an open circuit, which is incomplete, therefore the electricity will not flow. Now once I close the circuit, what did you notice happen to the light bulb? It came on. But when I open it, then the light goes off. Okay, so with a switch, I can control whether or not I have an open or closed circuit. So when it's open, I have an open incomplete circuit. When it's closed, then I have a complete closed circuit where electricity can flow, okay? So mirror, in a closed circuit, electricity can flow because everything is connected, okay? And mirror, in an incomplete circuit, Electricity cannot flow because something is open or broken. Okay, so those are our two big words. Um, and then whenever we talk about a switch, okay, so I want you to do this. Back that up a little bit. Okay, so whenever I say switch, you're going to do this. Then if I say close circuit, you're going to close it. That means electricity is flowing. An open circuit, you're going to open it. That means electricity is not flowing. I have an incomplete path. So. 
Switch. Closed. Open. Incomplete. Open. Closed. Complete. Okay? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for taking your notes and getting super prepared for class tomorrow. I cannot wait for you guys to investigate electricity and circuits and make some really cool um, closed complete pathways tomorrow. Have a great night.